In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on skewness, which is a very basic property of distributions. And uh, if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the short question, theoretical, which I want us to tackle. Which of the following statements is least accurate regarding a positively skewed distribution? Its median is higher than its mode. Its mode is higher than its median, or maybe its mean is higher than its mode. Okay, before we answer the question, a little bit of theoretical knowledge. When we think of distributions, it's always uh, customary to plot them on a chart. And on that chart, we're going to have on the vertical axis the frequency of um, occurrence and on the horizontal axis, the actual values uh, taken on by the um, individual items in that distribution. And the most kind of obvious, simple distribution uh, your shape you're going to see is the symmetrical one, which is often associated with the normal distribution. The normal distribution is symmetrical, but it's not just the symmetry um, which makes it normal. There is another par parameter called kurtosis, which we'll tackle in a separate question, which is also uh, essential. So this is a symmetrical distribution, which means its skew parameter or skewness parameter skewness or skew is actually zero. A symmetrical distribution doesn't exhibit um, skewness or skew, or it has a skewness or skew of zero. And for a symmetrical distribution, what you're going to find is that its most frequently occurring item, the mode, sits right in the middle here. And that is the same as the median, which is the value which divides this distribution into two equal halves. And it's also the same as the mean. So all three measures of central uh, tendency are in exactly the same place, right here, smack in the middle. Now, how about a positively skewed distribution? Because that's what the question is actually asking us about. Well, a positively skewed distribution will look like this. It will have a long tail on sort of the right-hand side here. Now, let's identify the various uh, items. First of all, let me write, this is a positively skewed distribution. And the highest point here is going to be always the mode, the most frequently occurring item. However, because there is an unequal number of observations to the left and to the right-hand side, we're going to have a median, which is at least slightly to the right of the mode. And this is what's going to divide our uh, distribution into halves in terms of the number of observations to the left and to the right. And then critically, the mean, you may recall from a previous question which I did that the mean is significantly influenced by outliers, so potentially high values lying here in the tail. The mean is going to be even more to the right than the median. So mean over here. And this is extremely important that you uh, kind of remember this for the exam in a positively skewed distribution. So one where the skew parameter or skewness is higher than zero. Um, it's zero if the distribution is symmetrical. The mean is going to be higher than the median and the median is going to be higher than both. Okay. Now let's see what um, answer corresponds to this observation. We're looking for the one which is least accurate. I mean, let's, let's uh, appreciate that. Okay, its median is higher than its mode. That one, A, is correct. Its mode is higher than its median. Well, that's not correct. It can't be right if the first one is uh, right. And its mean is higher than its mode. Well, that one is also fine. So uh, we're asked to pick the one which is least likely accurate here, and that seems to be answer B, right? So B is going to be the solution to this question, right? I've identified it, brilliant. Okay, let me just tell you a little bit more about how these, uh, what 
conclusions you may associate uh, with a positively skewed distribution. Right. To the left of the mode, or actually, I didn't write this well, to the left of the mean, you've got limited but frequent downside. So results which are less than the mean, they're quite frequent, uh, but in terms of their magnitude, they're limited. However, to the right of the mean, you've got potentially unlimited. So high, unlimited upside. So the potential for results which are significantly higher than the uh, mean is quite big. However, they're not so frequent, but less frequent. And that's one thing you may be asked about these conclusions coming from the fact that you're presented with one or the other distribution. Let's now translate this um, and, and kind of complete the picture by showing you a negatively skewed distribution. And with this one, as you can imagine, we're going to have a long tail to the left. So something that looks like this. And once again, identifying well, let's write that the skew parameter or skewness in this case is indeed negative, so less than zero. This highest point here is the mode. To the left of it, we're going to have the median. And even more to the left, the mean, which as we know, is significantly influenced by the outliers. And in this case, we could say, but there is, that there is limited, but frequent upside potential, so potential for results which are higher than the mean. And at the same time, quite a lot of potential for downside in terms of the magnitude. And Let's call this unlimited, but less frequent downside. Because the idea is that the sort of the number of observations lying here is not as big, numerous, as what we've got stuffed in here to the to the right hand side. The mean is um dragged by outliers, but there could be more lying to the right and then the left. And that's actually going to be the case because the median, which divides this into halves, is uh, lying to the right of the mean. Nevertheless, be prepared to face questions which examine the uh, conclusions or the obvious uh, consequences of having one or the other type of distribution.